Welcome. In this video, we'll explore chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, a serious and progressive lung condition that affects over 300 million people worldwide. COPD is defined as a chronic, irreversible airflow limitation caused by damage to the lungs, usually due to long-term exposure to harmful particles, especially tobacco. It includes two main components, chronic bronchitis, inflammation and mucus production in the airways, and emphysema, destruction of the alveoli, the tiny air sacs where gas exchange occurs. In this video, we will walk through the symptoms, diagnostics, differential diagnosis, management, prognosis, and key considerations. Most patients report a chronic cough, often with mucus and progressive shortness of breath, especially during physical activity. Other symptoms include wheezing, chest tightness, frequent respiratory infections, and eventually fatigue and weight loss. These symptoms develop slowly over years and are often ignored until significant lung function is lost. The gold standard for diagnosing COPD is spirometry. We're looking at the FEV1 to FEC, a prose bongo dilator FEV1 slash FEC ratio below 0.7 confirms airflow limitation. To stay in the terminology, FEV1 is the amount of air that can be forcefully exhaled in one second, and FEC is the total exhaled volume. Additional tests may include a chest X-ray to rule out other causes, blood gas analysis in severe cases, alpha-1 antitrypsin testing in younger patients or non-smokers. We're now looking at an X-ray with two pairs of lungs. On the left side, you will see a pair of lungs with COPD, and on the right side, it's a healthy pair of lungs. The first things that I notice when I look at these X-rays is that their lungs are hyperinflated. The lungs appear overexpanded, and you can see more visible anterior ribs, more than six or seven above the diaphragm, indicating increased lung volume. If we take a look at the diaphragm, it's more flattened. The diaphragm is less dome-shaped and it appears flat, which is typical in hyperinflation though. There's increased retrosternal lucency. Due to hyperinflation, there's more air space between the sternum, which also can be seen on PA views. If you take a look at the heart, it's elongated and vertical. It's a result of lung overinflation compressing the heart. Then, when you take a closer look at the darker area of this picture, you can clearly see a reduced vascular marking, and that's a decrease in visible blood vessels, especially in the lung periphery, indicating destruction of lung tissue, as seen in emphysema. Several conditions can mimic COPD, so it's essential to consider the differential diagnosis. Asthma usually has an earlier onset and is often reversible, Heart failure, which can also cause breathlessness and fatigue. Bronchiectasis and interstitial lung disease may show similar patterns on imaging or spirometry. A good clinical history and targeted testing help to clarify the diagnosis. Effective COPD management include both pharmacological and non-pharmacological strategies. First and foremost, smoking cessation. This is the only intervention proven to slow disease progression. Medication includes bronchodilators, inhaled corticosteroids, especially in patients with frequent exacerbation, combination inhalers in more severe cases. Other important interventions may be pulmonary rehabilitations, vaccinations like influenza, oxygen therapy for hypoxemic patients, and education to ensure proper inhaler use and self-management. COPD is a progressive disease. Lung function gradually declines, especially if the patient continues smoking or has frequent exacerbations. However, with early diagnosis, smoking cessation and proper treatment, many patients can maintain a good quality of life for years. Prognosis varies based on disease severity, comorbidities and access to care. If we summarize the key points of COPD, COPD is a chronic lung disease with irreversible airflow limitation. It's most commonly caused by smoking. It's diagnosed with spirometry, treated with inhalers, rehab and lifestyle changes. It's preventable, manageable, but it's not curable. Early recognition and intervention make a big difference. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more medical content and share it with your colleagues. 
Stay informed and stay healthy.